Welcome to this introduction of using NetLab. Now you'll have several assignments which are done through a virtual environment that you will connect to through a web browser and run through several exercises in labs. This is called NetLab. Uh, many times you'll just be told to, hey, do the NetLab 10. And so you'd have to go into NetLab and do Lab 10 in NetLab. And so I'm going to show you what that is, what that means, how to walk through it. Um, I also have a PDF instructions here on Rock, which also walks you through these same steps in case you don't want to watch this video again on how to do this. So if you go ahead and um, I opened up the instructions here, the first thing you need to know is that uh, NetLab really only works in Firefox. I can't guarantee that it'll work great in Chrome or in Internet Explorer or in Safari or anything else. So I recommend highly that you run the latest version of Firefox um, if you don't want to have any problems. The second thing you need to know is that NetLab runs off Java. So you need to make sure that you have Java running as well, that you have Java installed on your computer. Um, it's a big requirement. When you first log in, it will do a test for Java and say, nope, you don't have Java. So you can always go to java.com and download the latest version of Java and install that on your computer. Now, the address that we'll be going to to access NetLab is netlab.ecc.iwcc.edu. So I already have that open here. Take a look. This is what it should look like uh, when you first get there. Your username and your password. Your username will be your student ID number. Again, that's your first initial, your last name, and then a few digits of your student ID number. Um, which is very typical. It's the, your Iowa Western login number. Your default password will be capital I WCC123. Again, this is in the documentation. Your student ID number is your student ID. Um, not your student ID, but it's your student uh, login username number. And then here's the default password that you'll be using. Remember, it's case sensitive. So that is a capital I there at the beginning, WCC123. So let's go ahead and log in and see what we need to do. Well, first, let's look at the assignment here. So your first assignment will be NetLab A7A, OK, is what you'll do. Now, within 7A, there'll be four exercises and labs that you'll actually walk through. And then I expect you to answer questions these four questions regarding each lab. So for the first exercise within lab 7A, it's called the bash shell. You'll run through that exercises and then you'll answer these questions. Then you'll go into exercise two, listing directory contents. You'll run through those um, exercises. Then you'll answer the same four questions for exercise two. Um, that confuses a few students. Um, you are supposed to answer these questions. This is called the little lab report, and um, it's done for every exercise within the lab. So let's demonstrate how to do this. Here's NetLab once again. When you log in, it should look like this. Sometimes it's a little slow. You wait for the progress bar to come up. I do recommend that you do this test. It's testing that your firewall is compatible that um, you have a clear access to Java and to be able to to use this network. So I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and do this test anyway. It will take a minute or two to make sure that um, it's running, that you have Java installed. I'm running Linux, so um, it uses this um, version of Java called Iced T is what it's actually going to run in but you should actually see something that says Java if you're running on a Windows machine. So it's running through all the tests, making sure everything works. I'm going to agree, yes, go ahead and use Java. Yes, go ahead and uh, have full access to my machine. And there we go, we got an OK. So once you finally logged in, you've done the test, you should see options like this. Now, the way NetLab works is you usually need to schedule your time for to be able to access the lab. So if you go into the scheduler, 
pop up with this. Um, if you're in multiple classes with me, you will see several options here. Um, but most likely, many of you are only taking operating systems, so you only see the operating systems option there. So go ahead and click on operating systems. You'll come to this option. Now you can either reserve lab time for yourself or for a team. Since this is an online class, we're not going to be working as teams. You can go ahead and just reserve a lab time for yourself. And here are the multiple labs which are available for you. So when I say do lab 7A, well look at right here, lab 7A using the Bash shell. So that's the lab that you will be using. Now, before you actually go schedule time for the lab, if you want to look at the instructions and um, what you'll actually be doing, you can click right there on the manual, and it will walk you through everything you need to do. So here's the manual. Here's the actual lab that you're going to go through. As you see, here are the objectives. This is actually what you're going to be doing. You're going to explore the bash features like the man page and history and you're going to list things and stuff like that okay so let's go in and reserve our time now we'll click on lab 7a using the bash shell and you'll come to a calendar like this with um, 10 pods which are available you may not see as many as i have and these just mean um, each pod is a lab environment. So let's say pod one is available, no one else is scheduled there. If someone else was scheduled there, you would see a block um, carved out for them and uh, you wouldn't be able to schedule any time to be able to use it. So um, if, if you wanted to do it right now, you get right here, uh, the red line here should be the current time, though I don't think it's taking into account daylight savings. Um, so be, just be aware of that. The time might be a little off, but that's okay. Um, if you get really close right here to the red line, you can just schedule something for right now. See how it says start time right now. And end time is at 7.30. And you can actually extend that out up to four hours that you can block off if you wanted to. So I don't know if it'll let me do exactly that, but let me do this. And then it tells me how much time I have. Um, I am reserving this. And I'm going to start now. Now, if I wasn't starting right now, let's say I wanted to start Tuesday at whatever. Um, so if you wanted to schedule something for another day, you could. You come up here to the calendar section. You pick your day. You schedule your time. And then that's reserved for you. The reason this is done is we only have 10 labs available at one time that can be used. We have over 30 students on the, in this online class. You see the problem? So we need to be able to schedule time to be able to do these labs. So I'd really encourage you to come in here first. Know when you're going to be, I'm going to be available Thursday night from 6 to 10. That's when I'm going to dedicate time to this. Um, and you can go ahead and, and block that off. Or you can come in and go, hey, I have time now. Oh, if there's something open, go ahead and do it. Now the chances are that all 30 people are going to be on all at once is slim. But occasionally it does happen, particularly Tuesday evenings, the day that it's done. So I would really encourage you to either block off Tuesday evening early or to schedule it at another time because students by nature tend to wait till the very last minute to be able to schedule something and to finish their assignments. So um, that's the purpose of that. So let's get, I'm gonna schedule something for just right now and walk you through and show you how the lab environment looks. So I'm gonna schedule it for right now. One hour is fine. Um, I'm going to click OK. I'm done. I'm not going to make another reservation. Now, once I've done that, I can come back here and I can see a list of reservations. Now, if you set up multiple reservations, those should all be listed right here on this page. Um, if it's scheduled for a future time, you will not see this Enter Lab button. That will not be active or be available to you until your actual reserve time. So once you have your time scheduled, you can log off if it's in a future date and come back on and that'll be saved for you. Or, um, and then when you log back on, you should see that and you should be able to log in. So let's say I'm gonna start my lab now. I'll go ahead and click on enter lab. 
and it'll take a few minutes to start this up as it's getting your um, virtual machines ready and your lab assignments that you'll be doing and walking through and um, I should be ready here in just a moment as you notice that may have taken several minutes to get to this point but you're now in the lab environment uh, it gives you your time remaining and it gives you a few tabs up here these here are your actual virtual machines you have a CentOS server a Ubuntu server Fedora workstation and a Ubuntu workstation. Now to walk through your exercises, that is in your exercise tab. These are the instructions that you'll be using to, that you'll be walking through. So, and I'll walk through um, the beginning of the lab. So as you can see, we're doing lab 7A using the bash shell that's already highlighted and I'll click show content. That will open up a new tab. And what you can do is I separate that usually, and I do this kind of half screen thing, right? And then I go over here, and then you, you have your topology, and I should do this at half screen too on this side. So over here I have my instructions. There are going to be four exercises that I'm going to do. I'm going to scroll down to the first exercise and see what it has to say. See, it shows you a picture there. That looks just like it does over here on the left. So beginning here, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. So the first thing it says here is that we need to click on the Fedora workstation on the topology. So this is topology, Fedora workstation. I'm going to click on that. Yep, just do this automatically from now on. That'll make it easier. Again, this should say Java instead of Ice T for you, unless you're running Linux which is great. Otherwise, um, if you're running in Windows or Mac, you should just say Java. And I'm in. Now let's see if we can make this a page. Now look, that should look just like the icon here. So now it says the virtual machine will display. Make sure system admin is in the user field. So it says system admin right there and then enter the password netlab123. So now I'm going to log into my new virtual machine. I'm going to type in netlab123. I'm going to hit enter. And then you go down to the next step. You wait for it to boot up and log on. Just and it interacts and works just like a uh, regular Linux machine. And as you can see here, Linux does have a graphical interface. Um, it's kind of a plain one, but if you we follow the instructions here, it says that once you've logged in, you will need to open up a terminal terminal window. Um, if not, we need to do the kickoff application launcher, the F in the lower left hand corner of the desktop, and it even gives you a picture of what it looks like that F right there so let's see if we can find it there it is right there and we're going to go and go to search we'll type in console all right still not spelling it right there we go console now that looks just like the screenshot I'll click on that and that will open up a terminal window, a command line window, which should look like the next picture that we have here. Yes. So it says next, execute the command in the bash shell by typing it and pressing. So we're going to type the date command. So I'll come here and I'll type date and I'll hit enter. And I form the fourth step in this lab. And it says it should look something like that. Then we go to the next one, and it says to learn more about the commands, we're going to access the manual page for this command using the man command. Execute the following command to learn more about the date command. So let's learn more about the date command. We'll type man date. Hey, look at that. And that looks just like, oops, and so forth. And you continue to go through the lab like that. Uh, to get out of here, you hit Q. 
and you keep going down and you keep going down and you follow all the instructions until you get to number two now this is the second exercise so for each exercise remember we need to answer these questions Let's see if we have these questions that we have in the assignment for each lab exercise answer this question so what was the purpose and goal of the exercise we just did so well we I didn't go through the entire lab but hopefully you should be able to understand what you did okay or what were you trying to achieve even though I asked two questions I'm really just I want one response you know what was I want you to be able to explain to me that you understand what you're doing and you just weren't copying from the lab and and not knowing what you're doing you know uh, monkeys can do that right they can just copy something and walk through without any comprehension um, the next thing is what functions did you perform? well what did you actually do well we type the man command right next one is what commands or programs did you do? well we use the date command and then you take a picture and a screenshot and you post it on there and that's it that's how you do a net lab assignment once you've answered this question these four questions for each one of the exercises within lab 7a you type that up in word or in some type of um, word processor I don't care which one you use and you submit that through the Dropbox right here so you can just click right there and then submit that Word document, and that's how you do the NetLab assignments. If you have any questions on this, for some reason, this really tends to confuse students on what NetLab is and how it works and what they're supposed to submit and do. Um, but it's really straightforward. Um, but if you do have some questions, feel free to contact me, stop by at my office and come and see me, or uh, send me an email or a Hangouts text. And I'll be more than happy to walk you through this and uh, help you out. Once a student usually does this once, it's a pretty cake from there on out, and they, they have it down. Um, thank you so much.